Well, David Ashford is joining us now. The latest in the series we're doing here with people who have uh, done one year. In fact, everyone, of course, has done this one year as such. But you, of course, are one of the new boys. So it's always interesting uh, to see what it's like for you. I mean, you stood at the by-election last time to get in. Uh, you weren't even sure at that stage if you were going to stand again. But obviously, you had that uh, moment. You had to think about it. I did, and I had quite a few people contact me as well after the by-election, saying, would I stand again in the September when it came up again? So I did think about it. I was a bit of a late declarer, I think, compared yeah. to some. I declared about the July, if I remember rightly. Um, so was, it was, was it a big issue? Yeah. Um, it wasn't really. I mean, I was enjoying my time as a Douglas councillor, and obviously I was enjoying my work in the private sector as well, so I had to uh, make the decision as to whether I wanted to make the leap again. At that point, it would have been my, th and it was, my third campaign in mm. 18 months, because I'd stood in the local authority elections, I'd obviously stood in the by-election, so I'd spent basically pretty much 18 months just knocking doors. Well, you got this political background, what was it like for you? And did you have a, a particular thing you stood on? Well, I'm actually a bit of a broad stroke politician, in fact it's probably one of my weaknesses that I take too much on, I fight too many battles at the same time. Um, but one of the big things, of course, which I did promise at the requisition meeting, was that at my first sitting at Timwald I would bring forward a motion in relation to the free TV licences for the over 75s, and that's exactly what I did and it got unanimous support. So it's now working through the rest of the manifesto and trying to get the other promises I've made to the electorate in place. Okay, well, have you got anything big that you really want to push through in the next year? I think reform of the benefits system is a big one. I think the benefits system isn't quite fit for purpose at the moment. I think it's something that's been around since the late 40s. We just keep adding bits to it rather than actually looking what it achieves for people. Do you mean people assessed? Do you mean means testing? Means testing, I think, is very important. I know the Manx Labour Party has come out in the last month and said they don't want means testing, they want affluence testing. Well, with all due respect to them, when you actually look at the two, depending on how you do the means test, there's not that much difference. So the rich should pay, basically, and if they can, pay? If they can, yes, and I think that's the route that we should have taken with the prescription charges as well. Obviously, that's a debate going on at the moment, and I think means testing is absolutely crucial to that because under the current proposals, you would still have a case where you could have someone who is 75 and a multimillionaire getting their prescriptions free, but someone who's just above the benefit, li uh, benefit limit struggling who won't get them free. TV licences, doesn't everyone, didn't you go for everyone over 75 or was that means tested? It is a no, that's, general thing, that is it? an over, all over 75, but the so, reason for that is because that's in line with what they're doing in the UK okay. and the BBC. And obviously one of the things we were wanting to do was get back the agreement with the BBC. Okay. So that's the reason why with that. How's it been for you? I mean, you've been in council, now you come into uh, the House of Keys. Was it... An interesting move? I mean, how, what do you th yes, think Yes, it to was. It? I mean, it, it is very different, obviously. It's on a very different scale as well. Um, but no, I'm enjoying it. I think the first year has been very positive. One of the things I have been happy about is the way that the members of the House of Keys have shown respect for one another and have actually you know, engaged. There's been serious arguments but there's actually been not the hostility, I think, or the individual hostility. And some sittings have been very short, haven't they? I mean, everyone's just, like, loved each other and it's been Well, sort I wouldn't of say everyone's off. loved each other. If you've, if you've read the Hansard, Paul, I think you'll find that you know, that's not quite true. But it's been quite fast compared with the previous administration, where, you know, days and days of uh, discussions think, would go on. I think there has, but you've got to remember there is a difference between not debating things and being efficient mm. and with all due respect to previous houses I'd sat in the public gallery many times and listened to the same speech over and over and over again okay. and I think what we've got rid of particularly in Timwald is the repetitiveness where someone will stand up and say I agree with the other member and by the way I'll just repeat his entire speech again. Have you been able to move away from local politics to national politics when you talk about potholes and things like this you got a bit of stick on that one didn't you? Well, I, th I think in that case, a few people needed to go up and actually see the road because it was a bit more than potholes. Um, it was Belmont Hill. And in fact, you could say I had no vested interest because Belmont Hill actually falls in Douglas Central, not Douglas North. But if you looked at the state of that road, it was going right the way down. It, okay. If there was a bad winter, that was going to disappear. Generalisation, do you think there are things that are de debated that shouldn't be, you know, should be left to councils? Well, well I, I think there's things run by government that actually shouldn't be run um, like? by local authorities. Car parks is a big one. Mm -hmm government involvement in car parks and um, even in Douglas although Douglas Council is now operating Chester Street and so on the DOI still got a hand in it where else in the world would you go and find a government playing with car parks well they're running uh, radio stations and cinemas and other things uh 
zoos, if you call the wildlife yeah. park. I mean, again, would you see that something that should be Certain separate? things, yeah. yeah. I, I think there's other things that are national assets that do need to be operated at government level. And when you're in a small jurisdiction, you're not necessarily going to be able to do the same model as in the UK. Are you happy with the horse trams being in government running? Well, I know what you're going to come to. Of course, I was one of the Douglas members that <laughs> voted for its abolition. I'm not sure the cost they're quoting is the actual cost of running them. I think there's been quite a lot disappearing um, off the cost book with the way that they actually allocate costs across government yeah. uh, for services that are already in place. Now, you've done quite a lot of media this week, uh, this year, because I was talking to some people who I've hardly chatted to. Um, do you think you've almost been overexposed? I mean, some days you seem to come out on the radio interview, like daily, it, it seemed like. I know they may record a lot at one time, but did you, it's a, a fine balancing act not to overexpose yourself. I, I, you I think, I think there is. I mean, obviously, I've been very active at Question Time, and as you rightly say, the thing with radio is they'll get you in and they'll do one interview with you, but it's about six different topics, and then they'll split the interview individual interviews off so it sounds like you're camped outside Manx Radio every day and I can assure you I don't have the time for that yeah. Um, so yeah there has been quite a bit of exposure myself and Laurie Hooper I think are probably the two mm. that have had the most exposure in the last year so I think it is striking a balance but like I say it's probably one of my weaknesses I do take on a lot of topics at the same time and fight multiple battles and just rem remind us what departments are you covering at the minute? Uh, well I'm in within the, a member of the cabinet office with responsibility for the government technology service and also HR I'm also a member of the Social Affairs Policy Review Committee, the Tim Wood Standing Orders Committee, the House of Keys Management Committee, and numerous Lock other committees. committees. I've got Is that what new boys get, do you think? They, they um, dump stuff on the new no, boys? No, I, I don't think so. Um, they they I, think I you're think a committee that, man. Um, obviously, <laughs> because I've also got the Public Sector Pensions Committee where I'm a member and vice chair of the Public Service Commission as well. Have you got your eyes on anything you'd like? Um, at the moment, I'm quite content in the Cabinet Office. The Cabinet Office is obviously one of the central departments, um, and I think there's certainly enough work for me to get my teeth into there. What about to looking ahead? I mean, are you a career politician? I mean, you are, aren't you, really? You, you, you'd see yourself doing this for some time, and if so, you'd obviously like to be a minister. Well, that's up to the electorate of Douglas North how long I'm actually doing it But you, for, you but, see yourself uh, at the stage... We, 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 we'll Carry wait on. and see. Yeah. I mean, we're early days yet. I understand, uh, but... By the time we get to the end of five years, I might have had enough and want to go back to the private sector. Mm. Um, you never know with these things, do you? Um, but we'll wait, we'll wait and see. In terms of a ministership, at the moment, I'm quite content in the Cabinet Office. If you were a minister, I'm going to push you on this, is something you'd like? Um, no, I don't think so, really. I'm quite content with, as I said to the Chief Minister when he got me in to ask uh, about departments, I'm quite content with any job. I was the same when I was on the council. My view is if my colleagues want me to do a job, I'll do it. If they're equally, if they don't want me to do Ooh. any job, You sound that's like a fine politician. Sound like a... Okay, how's your, your uh, relationship with the Chief Minister? Uh, very good. I've known, do you see much of him? I've known the Chief Minister for quite a while. Um, yes, I, I think we have a very good working relationship. I meet with him fortnightly for update meetings along with Minister Thomas as members of the Cabinet Office. Um, obviously, he's a very busy man. He's uh, have a, got a lot on his plate. But I think that at the moment, for the first year, I think it's probably the most positive first year of any administration for a long so, time. So no regrets at all? I mean, you're just having a jolly time, by sounds of it. Well, obviously, the stresses, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's one big party the whole way along, Paul. But uh, no, I'm, I've been enjoying the first year, and hopefully I've made a little difference already. And certainly on the individual constituency casework, hopefully I've been able to get change for certain people. I mean, there's another year ahead, which is going to be a positive year. Then, before you know it, people will start to be, uh, you know, thinking about their seats and their positions. Uh, have you ever had a thought that someday you'd like to go to be an MLC, for instance? Or was that way too early to ask a young chap like you? Well, my views on MLCs are quite clear. I Remind it should us. be publicly elected. Right. I think it should be a publicly elected uh, legislative council. Do you see that happening? I would hope so. In I mean, this I'd... term. I think this has been the term to actually push for it because we have 12 new members of the House of Keys and obviously the Liz Vane report has been yeah. debated and also there is the current uh, committee chaired by the Speaker. Have you ever felt you know, tied? The, the, you know, everyone's got these great ideas but then they, they get shoved into another committee and then it goes into the long grass somewhere. Do you, have you had that thing about being in government is quite uh, draining? It can be. Um, at the moment, I don't think there's very much that's been sort of shoved into the long grass. I mean, even the Liz Vane report where people were thinking it was going to go to a committee and never be heard of again, the Speaker's Committee has to report back on the first stage to October's Timwald. So even where things are going to committee, the timescales seem to have sped up. Nobody seems to be doing what, as you rightly say, used to be the old weapon of shove it to a committee and everyone will have forgotten about it in five years' time. OK, well, it's been interesting talking to you today. I mean, you have to have a view on how you're doing, and you know I'm going to ask you that, out of 10, can you rate yourself? 
Personally, probably a seven, I'd say. A safe seven? A safe seven, I'd say. And the government, how do you rate the, as a whole? I think, I think probably an eight, because an eight. I, th I think for, for the start of an administration, the difficulty with the start of an administration is obviously you've inherited a lot from the previous administration, so the first budget is never really your own. But this will be the interesting year for this administration, because the first year of any administration is always steady as you should go. This one has got to be about delivery.